Good morning, boys and girls. How have you been, boys and girls? Welcome to today's lesson. And with me today, we have teacher Jane. Hi, children. Hi, children. And Josephine Moshina. Hi, children. And we are going to start with a word of prayer. Our Lord and our God, we come before you this time with our thanks, King of Glory, for being with us and even enabling us to come here and be, our, be with our children. We give thanks and we honor you. We give thanks for the gift of life and the good health, King of Glory. Father, as we start our lesson today, we pray that you be with us as we start King of Glory and you give us courage, and whatever we are going to deparate on, oh dear loving Father, be of good importance to our children. We give thanks and we honor you, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. And now, I, I welcome Teacher Jane to take us through the lesson, but before we go through the lesson, we are going to have a song. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, so oh, Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let us praise the Lord, right hand, left hand. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, so oh, Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let us praise the Lord, right foot, left foot, right hand, left hand. Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons, so oh, Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let us praise the Lord. Yes, children, boys and girls, our lesson today is about a listening prayer. And the theme is God knew and cared for us even before we were born. So, I welcome teacher Jen to continue with the lesson. Thank you. Good morning, boys and girls. We thank God for this another opportunity that he has given us so that we can continue to hear his word. We thank you that even at home, he's still taking care of us. And we thank God for even, every mo or even seeing every morning. We thank God so much. Our lesson today, as teacher Josephine has said, it is listening prayer that we should learn that God knew and cared for us even before we were born. And to start, off, to start us off, our reading comes from the book of Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 to 10. And I start. Now Salai, Abraham's wife, and born him no children, but she, she had an Egyptian slave named Aga. So she said to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. Go after Abraham. Had been, so, after Abraham had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian, took her Egyptian slave, known as Aga, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. She slept with Aga and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abraham, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abraham said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai, you treated her, so she freed from her. The angel of the Lord from, found her near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shah. And he said, Aga, slave of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? I am running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. 
Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Ismael, for the Lord has heard your misery. That ends our... Thank you so much, Sister Josephine. We've heard the story of a boy called Ishmael. And in the previous lessons, I remember Teacher Rachel Gedehu taking us through the story of Abraham. And he told about, we, we, we talked about Abraham's family. There was Abraham, there's Sarah. And they had this servant called Hagar. And who was their servant? And, and today's lesson, I want us to look at the word feeling. Maybe Teacher Josephine, would you tell us more what you know from the word feeling or emotions? Feelings. There are positive feelings and the negative feelings. On the positive side, we have happiness, loving, confidence, amused, envious, kindness also, obedient and caring. And on the negative side of the word feelings, we have angry, lonely, miserable, jealousy, confused, bored, unfair, betrayed, and abandoned. Thank you, Teacher Josephine. Indeed, in life we go through so much, different kind of feeling, and it is normal to go different, to, to experience different kind of feeling. At times we feel sad, at times we are happy, and all these feelings that they, they happen to us. But today we are going to learn about this, the story of a boy that we have learned, we know, we know all, we know about this boy, Ishmael. And uh, who was a son to Abraham. And now, in our lesson, our theme is God knew, knew us and cared for us even before we were born. So, as we go through the story, that our story goes like this, that the fight for Ishmael started even before he was born. In fact, it started when he was still in, in, in his mother's womb. And the story goes like this. We have heard that from the past lessons, we have heard that there was Abraham and his, and his wife, Sarai. And they had stayed for so many years without having a baby. And God had said, had promised Abraham that one time I will bless you with a baby. But from the way we, Teacher Josephine has read for us, we have heard that Sarah became impatient that they are taking so long, now they are getting so old, and now he, she's seeing now we, I cannot give birth. And he, 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 he gave this suggestion to Abraham that he should have the baby with the, 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 their house help, or their household help. And this house help was a foreigner. He had come from very, very, very far. Boys and girls, you know now, someone who has come from very, very far, not here around. Even the, the house, at times our house, masters that we employ in our house. We usually get them from very far. So in the case of Abraham and Sarah, they had gotten their servant from very far. So uh, Sarah suggested to Abraham that they should get a baby with Hagar, and it happened. After Hagar conceived, trouble started in Abraham's house. Then her, all of a sudden, Sarah changed her mind. He started seeing like, Hagar is taking his position as the wife of Abraham. And he started feeling hungry, angry with, with, uh, with Hagar. So we, have, we have learned about different feelings. So he started feeling that he doesn't like Hagar anymore. And he started quarreling Abraham. He's telling Abraham, now you see this, there are so many problems here. And now Abraham just told Sarah, now just this is your maid servant. You told me to give him a, a baby, and now you are complaining. So just do what you want to do to do, her, to do with her. And at that point, Sarah quarreled Hagar so much, until Hagar felt, no, I cannot take this one anymore. And now Hagar left, the, left that home, and he went to the desert. He just went, he just going to anywhere. He didn't know where he was going. 
but he found herself in a desert. And now he sat down in a desert, very confused, very angry. You know, he, she had come, she, she, Haka is a foreigner who didn't, who he had no other family, he had no, he had no relatives around. So he just sat there confused. Now, what, what do I do? Where, now I have, a, I have a baby in my stomach. What will happen to my baby? Are we going to die here in the desert, Lily? And now he just sat there confused. I don't know, I don't know. Teacher Josephine, yes. what do you think was going on in Hagar's mind when he was in, she was in the desert? Yes, when Hagar was in the desert, she, was, she, she got confused and she had this in her mind. She was wondering that who will take care of her also, who will ha what will happen to the unborn child and whether both of them, of them, the unborn child and her, who is going to take care of them? Indeed, boys and girls, Haga must have felt frustrated. Felt, Haga must have felt so angry. But let me tell you, boys and girls, it is said that even when when we, when, uh, even small babies, when they are in our, in our mother's womb, at times those babies usually hear our cry. When a mother is going through a challenge like the, the hugger was going through, the baby, which was in the, the baby who was in the, the, the womb would feel that there was something that was going on. And it was, it was, uh, uh, it was, not, it was a very sad, sad, very sad moment for, for Haga. And now when she was seated there confused, a voice just, and a God sent an angel and went to Haga and asked, Haga, what are you doing here seated in the desert? Why are you looking so confused? And then Haga explained, Sarah had mistreated her and he felt that it is better when her being in the desert than in the home of Abraham. But God said to, to Haga, go back to Go back to Sarah's house and do whatever he tells you to do. But that not but that's not all. He said, The Lord, I am going to bless you. He said, the Lord told, told him that Haga, you are going to get a son, and I am going to take care of you. And we plus your unborn baby. So and Haga obeyed and went back to Abraham's house and he she did everything, everything that she was told to do by Sarah. by Sarah, and he just stayed there. With a few months to come, then the baby was here. And now, again, now everybody changed. The feeling now changed, and everybody was happy. Now they have a baby. You know they had stayed for so long without a baby in that house. You can imagine even us in our family when we have a baby, when a baby comes, we did it. There's a lot of joy. And that joy, they felt a lot of joy, a lot of joy, and they did celebrated the boy. And God, when Sarah was in the desert, God told Hagar, "You are going to get a son, and this son, you are going to call her, you are going to call him Ishmael, which means God hears." So the boy, when when Hagar got the baby, he called he called him Ishmael. Boys and girls, God actually noticed how unfair. Hagar was, was treated. And that is why God promised that he's going to, to, to bless him, to bless her. So they continued and they continued celebrating the baby. But before too long, if we could remember back the story that we hear, the story of Abraham. We, we, this, after, so, after Sarah had had Abraham's thing for so many years without a baby, again, Sarah was Sarah conceived and now he was now blessed with a baby child who is a boy and we named who, who was named Isaac. Again now the quarrel again started in Abraham's house. Boys and girls, you can imagine how the house of Abraham was because, because of these quarrels. Now there are two children, there are two babies here, and now Sarah was the real wife of Abraham. And now Sarah started telling Abraham now this this Ishmael, this Haga and the baby now have to live. And Abraham was not happy at all with, with, with Sarah's request. And he said, and he wondered, now what do I do? 
that Lord spoke to Abraham and said, let's Hagar and, and, uh, and the baby go. I'm going to take good care of them. So they went to the desert, both of them very sad. Although he did not say this to Ishmael, but Hagar was so confused and he, you know, as a mother, she had, he had, she had to look strong. So they went to the desert. And before they went to the desert, actually for Abraham loved Ishmael. So Abraham packed food for them, enough food. But when they, they were in the desert, their food got finished. Even the water that they had carried got finished. And now Hagar didn't know now what to do next. He was started worrying. The baby started, has started crying. Now he just said, now what will happen? Am I going to watch my son die? He said, no. He just thought, let me, let me go and put, put, my, put Ishmael under the tree and uh, then I'll go somewhere else. I'm not going to sit here and watch, watch him die. So Hagar went and placed the baby under a tree and now the baby now was just crying, 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 crying. Then Hagar also now went to a different place and sat. He was, she was also crying. And where they were crying, just God also heard their cry and came to Hagar. He asked Hagar, what is it again? So you can imagine what, how, how Hagar was feeling. So the voice of the Lord came to Hagar and reminded, and reminded her that God promised to take care of, of her and the son. And also reminded Hagar about the name Ishmael, which, which, which says that God hears. So, do, so he said, do you remember the name Ishmael, what it means? It means God hears. So God heard the boy crying and said to Hagar, do not be afraid. I've heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift him up and take him by your heart. I'm going to make him into a, a, into a great nation. Then God helped Hagar to see what she had not seen. There was a well around there and all through Hagar had not seen. But God made Hagar to see it. So Hagar went and lift up the boy up and went and took the water and gave to the boy. And the boy stopped crying. And from that day, even now, as they, they continued to live in the desert, but from that time, God continued to provide for them. You know, all this time, Ishmael was growing, was growing. He was able now to go to look for food. There was water and the, the, the God continued to feed them. So God saw them and he had them. Even before Ishmael was born, God saw him and proved that he cares for him. And guess what? He cares even about you, about us. Even us, even at the, at, at, as we stay at home. Now we are not going to school. And even like this week, the Minister of Health said that the whole of this year we are not going to school. God is still taking care of us. And God is still listening to our prayer. So as God took care of Hagar and Ishmael, it is the same thing that even us as children, that God loves us and he takes good care of us. Teacher Josephine, what do you think the important what do you think is the important of this story to us? Yeah, the important part of this story is boys and girls, when you have problems, you should look upon God because God hears and sees whatever you are doing, even before you are born, God was with you up to the time where you are. So children, take care and believe in God because he is everything and he is going to solve your problems in whatever situation you are. Thank you, boys and girls. Okay, thank you so much, Tisa Joyce. And you know, boys and girls, there are so many, did you know there are different ways to talk to God? You can pray to God loudly. You can pray to God silently. You can even take a piece of paper and light your prayer. And God will still listen to all this type of praying. And today, boys and girls, I want us to, uh, even as we are at home, I would want us to have a print paper and a pen. And then, then after the lesson, we can sit somewhere and have a quiet time. Let's write our prayer. Let's sit down. Write our prayer to God. Write everything that is you are feeling. 
There's, there's so much, as I, I have said, there's so much that is going on with children, especially this week that the, 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 the Minister of Education has said that they are going to repeat, everyone will repeat the class that he was in. I'm sure all children are, children are not amused with this, with this thing. So if, the, if that thing is disturbing, you will sit down with a paper, write, light your prayer, sit quietly, speak to your God because God hears our prayer. And as we have learned from the story is that even before we were in our mother's womb, even before boys and girls you were born, the moment that we are conceived of our mother's womb, God knew us and God would listen to us. And God, so God loved us much, much, much before. And that comes to the end of our lesson. Teacher Joshua, what do you have to add from that lesson? Yeah. Uh, whatever, uh, boys and girls, I, want, I would want you to note one, two or three things in this lesson. Is what does Ismail mean? Ismail means God ears. So God will be hearing whatever you ask him to do for you. He will be with you and he will be hearing you. The same way he had mother, the other, the mother of Ismail. The second one is a Roy, which means God who sees me. So God will be seeing you. In whatever situation you will be, God will be seeing you. The living God who sees and ears will always be with you in times of happiness and in difficult situations. And before I end, uh, children, you are supposed to trust in God and, and God is going to care for you in all situations. Boys and girls, praise be to God. Thank you so much, Teacher Josephine. Now we end our lesson with a word of prayer. So let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence this, this morning, Lord. We thank you because you have taught us that you usually take good, you, you started taking care for us even before we were born. We thank you even for each and every thing that you have continued to be with us, Lord. You have continued to take good care of us, Lord. We thank you because now we can trust in you more, even, even in, in times of difficulties, Lord. As we stay at home, Father, we want to trust in you, Lord, that all will be well for us, Lord. We thank you for the, that you love us so much, Lord. We thank you and we pray for our parents, O Jehovah God. We pray for our brothers and our sisters, O Jehovah God. Even as we continue, Lord, we pray that Jehovah God, you are going to guide us, you are going to bless us, Lord. We continue even praying for our nation, Lord, Kenya, Father. We pray that Jehovah God, you are going to make a way even for our country, Lord, so that this COVID-19, Lord, will, 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 they will be to make a way, Lord, for this COVID-19, O Jehovah God, and their medicine will be found. We thank you and we bless your holy name, for it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen.